What's up friends? Welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a girl chat video. I haven't done these in so long so I'm so excited. I pulled you guys over on Instagram because it's most anonymous and I asked you guys what tea do you guys have for me? What do we want to talk about today? And I'm going to give my perspective. Obviously, this is my perspective. So if you don't agree with something, that's totally fine. Just drop it in the comments. You know, we can all have different thoughts on these subjects. But as long as we're respectful and kind to everyone. So let's get right into it. Okay, question number one. How do I let go of my situationship? I'm emotionally invested. This is my first one. I feel you, girl. I've been in situationships and I almost feel like they're harder to get over than a breakup because you have no conclusion like you didn't go through the like the breakup of like trying to figure out and like all of that sometimes the situation should just end someone else gets in a relationship sometimes you guys just both know it needs to end and it sounds like you're trying to let go of this but you need to actively like let go of it be dumb for real you know don't just say it but be dumb for real you know sometimes you just need to cut these people out of your life even if they're not necessarily bad but you know the situation isn't progressing in it in to anything positive so I would say keep pouring back into yourself find new hobbies it's summertime or it's about to be summertime so find new things you can do outside of the house you pour a lot into that other person so when it comes to an end sometimes you feel like you don't really have anything else to do you know you've spent so much time like developing this relationship that you've lost track of your own hobbies or things you like to do so it's on you to pour back into yourself whatever that might be it could be hanging out with friends spending time with family finding new hobbies I this season of my life I've been all about finding new hobbies that are really social because I'm also trying to find girlfriends so um, like pottery pickleball I've been trying different workout classes new ways for me to find new friendships that are fulfilling outside of relationships I would say just pour back into yourself but you really got to cut them off clean you know be like there's no B if there's no heartache but I can't keep doing this I want to find someone who is serious about me and I want to find somebody you know different <laughs> so good luck girl a situation should suck okay, question number two I live in LA and the guy I've been into lives in New York been talking for months but no commitment okay so you might get mad at me for this one but I think I think you kind of sound delulu babe <laughs> Like, I understand if you're talking to someone, it gets really emotional. Uh, like, I've seen this with friendships where, um, you know, they become, like, FaceTime friends. They're talking on the phone every night. They've never met, but they form this really emotional, strong connection through the phone, pretty much. But, like, not in real life. Like, have you met this guy before? I feel like the only time long-distance relationships work is when you guys were together from the jump in the same city dating in a relationship and then maybe you have to part i feel like that's the only way long distance works but like what's the game plan here like is he gonna move to you are you gonna move to him are you guys going to take the flights twice a month to go see each other like that shit's expensive and kind of unrealistic so i feel like obviously there is no commitment because this is not reality, you know? You guys are kind of living in Delulu land where, you know, it feels really real to you, but like on paper, in person, is this a real relationship? But yeah, I would be weary to relocate for someone, especially like it sounds like you know them pretty well, but do you know what it's like to be with them on a regular basis, on a daily basis? Do you know what it's like to live with them or to stay and sleep with them? And you know, like that, that's different than communicating over the phone, actually being with someone, picking up on their vibes, their tendencies, um, the way they treat you in person, how they interact with other people in the world, that's a big difference than over the phone. There's a lot more you need to get to know about this person before there should be any sort of commitment. I honestly wouldn't take it that far and I really don't expect them to lock it down if there's no reality of us like being in the same city anytime soon so I'm sorry I, pro I know you probably didn't want to hear that answer but I just got to keep it real with you okay and next question I was texting something inappropriate to another guy and my husband found out about it how do I fix it sis what are you doing <laughs> first of all you made your bed and you gotta lay in it point blank period you need to own up to it um 
Clearly there is a reason why you felt the need to get external validation from other men. So we need to figure that one out first. We gotta unpack that. I do not condone cheating, even if it's something as simple as texting another person. If you have ulterior motives, it's cheating in my eyes. And the other person has no reason to stick around for that. They don't deserve that no matter if they were lacking in showing affection or communicating properly. Those are things you need to communicate to your partner that you need. You don't get to take the easy way out and go find it from someone else, especially if you got a ring on it. You know, you took those vows. As far as fixing it, babe, it's kind of out of your control. He can either leave or stay. I wouldn't blame him either way. I would say the best thing to do in this situation is really come clean about everything in your relationship. You gotta lay it all out there, all your vulnerability. You gotta let him know exactly what you need out of the relationship, exactly what's been missing that has led you to this point. Because the one thing about it, when it comes to everything, careers, relationships, all of it, Closed mouths don't get fed. You need to communicate what you need out of life in general. So yeah, I would say first and foremost, you got to be super vulnerable and open and obviously apologetic. It sounds like you are, but there needs to be more like relationship and communication building. I don't know if that looks like therapy to you guys or if that looks like really diving into your relationship and putting it at the forefront of your marriage right now. But something needs to give because I know women, I know that women don't cheat off the cusp. It's something that's very much so planned and analyzed. And if you came to that conclusion to, you know, get into some sort of situationship with somebody else, you got to figure out what led you to that point and why you're not happy with your current situation. So best of luck to you, babe. Question, what do you do if you're still in love with an ex, but you know he won't ever change? Mama, it's time to stop living in Delulu land. Come on now. We're better than this. I feel like you need to just keep it at the forefront of your head that this dude is not shit. <laughs> we gotta move on. You know, I feel like a lot of the time we put on those rose-colored lenses of like remembering the good times, especially when we're feeling sad and lonely. You gotta pick yourself back up and get outside. Start conversing with men who are actually good for you because they set the standards higher, you know? Like, it's kind of like those old exes you dated like years and years ago. Like, okay, so in my early 20s, I was dating a guy. I thought he was perfect. I wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole to date, you know, because our standards have upgraded over the years through our dating experiences and just through our self-development. So obviously you need to start dating men who are shit, who, you know, respect you, care for you, want to do nice things for you, but you also need to pour into yourself as well. Besides dating men who actually see the value in us, another thing I would say is you need to build up your confidence again. A lot of these men, they kind of tear down our confidence and then we don't see the value in ourselves. So we'll go ahead and run back to them because we think that they're all we can get pretty much. You know what I mean? So I would say pour into things that are going to build up your confidence and self-value. So I'm talking trying new things things, um, starting a little side hustle, pouring your energy into things that are going to make you level up as a woman. And then you're going to look back on old dude and you won't even recognize the woman you were when you were dating him. You know, you've leveled up so much. You can't even relate to him. You have nothing to do with him. Um, I definitely have exes, you know, who were no good for me, who have tried to run it back. And I'm like, there, you were a season. You were, we're done with that. But yeah, I don't know. You say you were in love with this man, but you know you can't be with him. I don't think you were actually in love with him. Let's be straight up. <laughs> Sorry. I know I'm just going to push your guys' buttons today, but I'm, I'm going to call it out how I see it. I don't have much information to go off of. Um, but you know, if you can't be with him, if he's no good for you, you, yeah, you might think you love him, but is he causing you more pain than good? That's not love. Okay. Okay. This next question, it's kind of a long one, a lot of context. So let's get into it. 
So my husband secretly looks at other girls' only fan accounts. He also secretly messages girls on social media, but he deletes them afterwards. I found out through a girl we were mutual friends with that he talked to her not too long ago, but I looked at his phone and I found nothing. I did an awful thing and I got access to his accounts and found out he was still messaging girls who were pretty, but the conversations were innocent but they would still be deleted. I also saw he was going to girls' profiles and clicking on their OnlyFans accounts. Girl, you're an investigator, how'd you do that? <laughs> to backtrack, towards the beginning of us dating, he was really good friends with a girl and then paid for her OnlyFans account. That's weird as fuck. And I found out because he told me while he was drunk. Since then, we decided I was very uncomfortable with the idea of him using OnlyFans. He is someone who has a lot of friends, which are girls, which I don't mind, but deleting messages makes me worry that he thinks more. What do I do? Do I ignore it? How do I start the conversation if I do have it? Okay, so first off, you already had this conversation with this man. You said, I do not feel comfortable with you following people on OnlyFans, I'm sure you probably brought up the social media thing, like how, like why are you talking to other girls on social media? I can't remember if you said that or not. If you've already brought this up and brought it to his attention, yeah, this feels disrespectful to our relationship. It feels disrespectful for me, for you to be looking elsewhere. And it's low-key embarrassing. Like, how are all these girls going to know that my man is trying to flirt with them? That's disrespectful to me. It's embarrassing for me and for our relationship. So, babe, he sounds like a loser in my opinion. He could be a cool guy. He could be a cool friend. But he sounds like a loser boyfriend. He does not sound like he's confident in any sort of way. If he's seeking so much outside validation from other women, it shows he's not confident himself. He needs so much validation that he's hiding all of this from you. He just sounds lame as fuck in my opinion, and I think you need to be done with him. I'm sorry, I'm not, <laughs> I really don't want all of you guys to break up with your boyfriends, but things like this, like, it's only gonna get worse. Let's be honest, if he hasn't worked on himself, like, it's only going to progress into something more. There will be a woman out there someday that is like, oh yeah, he's cute, and then they take it further, they go on dates, they start fucking, you know, and he's going to, it's going to lead into cheating. So I'm sorry, I don't want to burst your bubble and blow up your relationship, but that's what it sounds like to me. He sounds like an insecure man who needs a lot of validation from women, and you don't need to put up with it. He's already going as far as to delete all of these things because he knows they're wrong, you know? If he didn't see anything wrong in it, he wouldn't be deleting it, but you've already communicated to him. You don't feel comfortable with this. He still does it anyways. So go let him be single at this point because that sounds like what he wants to do. He wants to be thirsty as fuck under a bunch of girls like Instagram posts. Let him. Like you don't need that type of energy because clearly he hasn't worked on himself. So I would say, baby, he's got, yeah, he's got to work on himself. You did nothing wrong at this point. Um, as far as like the snooping and stuff, like we need you on the FBI. <laughs> uh, that was great. Like I don't know how you did all of that, but good for you girl. Because he clearly gave you a reason to do it. I don't see anything wrong with it. You already told him, this doesn't make me feel comfortable. This, you know, feels embarrassing for me, for our relationship. Um, and clearly he doesn't respect that. Okay, next question. I'm pretty sure one of my students' dads is cheating on his wife of 10 years. Do I tell her? Girl, you guys are the FBI. How'd you figure that out? I wish you would have given me some more context. I don't really know what to say at this point. It sounds like you don't really know these people. Like if they're your students' parents like you have an acquaintance kind of relationship at that point baby I would stay out of it unless you have solid 100% proof that you could just kind of slide to her and stay out of it maybe do it that way but otherwise I would stay out of it you don't know these people you don't know the relationship you don't know what's going on <laughs> they could be in a whole open relationship you really don't know it so from my perspective if you don't know somebody enough to know how they would react about the situation I would probably stay away from it 
Unless he, it directly affects you. Like if somebody is coming up to you, trying to flirt with you, and you know they're married, that's when I, that's the green flag for me to be like, here, here's the evidence. Take it with what you want. I don't know about this one. I'm gonna let you guys in the comments sound off and let her know what you think she should do. Next question. I have a friend who is jealous of me. How do I deal with cutting this person off? I haven't dealt with this personally from like any close friends, but I've definitely seen it in the past where somebody is, you know, posing as a friend, but they're secretly preying on your downfall. You know, you can see the enjoyment in their eyes anytime you fail or you're going through hardship. Babe, those people need to immediately exit. We don't have time for them. We're not telling them anything. We're not even associating with them anymore. As far as cutting them off, we're all adults at the end of the day. You don't really owe this person an explanation. If you do want to give them some closure, though, I understand like wanting to like really set in stone closure this. I would just send them a long message about, you know, I, I no longer feel like our friendship is beneficial. Um, I feel like you're jealous of me. Give them some examples, um, all of that, and then send the message and then block them and be done with it. Be respectful, but just set it very clear that I'm no longer associating with you. Um, I wish you the best of luck, but peace out. <laughs> Go ruin somebody else's life. I can't get away from this lingering toxic man who doesn't even want to date me. Mama. <laughs> okay, you know what? Like, I love you guys, but how are we going to act like the victim in this situation? You literally put yourself in this situation. That's the thing. Like, we have to take accountability for our part in what we allow in our life. Because your life is literally altered by every decision you make. Do you ever think about that? It's kind of a high thought, but like the decision on where you went to school alters you this way towards this way. Everything we do in our life, every decision we make in our life alters our path in a different sort of way, which is crazy and mind fucky to think about. But you have to take a little bit of accountability. This toxic man won't leave me alone and he won't even wife me up. Baby, you're giving him access to you. What do you mean? <laughs> you are allowing these people into your life who you know are no good for you, have no good intentions for you. So, I mean, obviously he's going to keep coming back for more because you're easy prime time, like accessible, available to him. Yeah, he probably doesn't really give a shit about you because that's, you know, low-key, that's kind of some men, you know. If they know they have easy access to you, um, they can keep coming back for more. They don't necessarily value you because they just know that you're accessible. So you're allowing this man who you know is bad for you, toxic, no good, to keep coming back and back for more because you've allowed it so many times. So just think about it this way next time, you know. While you're putting up with this toxic man who's not doing shit for you, well, what if you said no and then you went out that night with your girlfriends instead and you met this guy who was wonderful for you, you know. Like, that's where it kind of comes back to, like, every decision you make in your life can impact your life in different ways. Just say no and see and find out what else comes to you. Oh, my God. This shit is going to drive me crazy. <laughs> but like I said in the other answer, I can't remember which one. If you don't value yourself enough, you're going to let no good, not shit men back into your life because you don't see the value you have in yourself. So first you need to work on that. You need to level up as far as how you perceive yourself. I'm not putting up with this shit no more. He's not doing anything to benefit me, my life, anything like that. So why am I putting up with this terrible man? You know, it's because I don't see the value in myself. So you have to first work on that part, but stay away from him. What are you girls doing? Come on now. Okay, next question. Any advice for an older 27-year-old virgin? I want to meet someone and lose it. Okay, so I know people who are in my life who, you know, they lost their virginity a little bit later, like in their 20s or they're still virgins. And um, it was not like religious reasons or anything like that. It was just like I 
did not meet the right person and now it feels a little too serious for like a casual hookup. Um, but I just want to lose this shit so I don't need to have these awkward conversations anymore. So I feel you. <laughs> Personally, I've always told people, I'm like, you don't really need to disclose it. If you just want to lose it and you're feeling it with someone, you're enjoying it and you want to have like a casual hookup, you don't necessarily need to disclose it. Like women literally bleed from sex randomly sometimes. Like, I mean, I have in the past. Like my birth control was weird, stuff like that, you know. Um, so I would say you don't need to disclose it. If you want to, you can. Um, but it's not like it really affects them in any sort of way. Does that make sense? I don't know if like, yeah, no, fuck it. I don't think it affects them in any way. It, you know what? You guys were gonna fuck before, so like, yeah, I don't think it really affects them. If you want to say something to them, you could just be like, you know, I haven't ever had sex. It's not because I was holding out for like marriage or anything. It's just it hasn't been the right person and right time, but I, I, I'm feeling you. And I think this could be perfect. But I would say the green flags for as far as finding someone to lose it to, Someone who is like calm about it. Someone who doesn't freak out and think they're deflowering you or whatever the fuck that means, <laughs> you know? Like someone who's calm and understanding does not make it a big deal, who just is like, oh, okay, yeah, like whenever you're ready, let's let's get down and dirty. <laughs> so yeah, good luck, girl. I know you're gonna find somebody. I had a similar question to this one um, about someone inexperienced. Oh, okay, any advice for telling a new man you're dating that you're far less experienced sexually than he is? Okay, I wouldn't even trip about it. I don't feel like you need to have these conversations, honestly. Like, if you've only had sex with one or two people and you feel like he's had sex 30, 40, whatever, <laughs> It doesn't need to have a, be a conversation because even if you are more sexually experienced, you're still having sex with a new person. It's still a new experience, just like it is with kissing someone. Like, you never know how you're going to go into a kiss, like, with a new person. Is it going to be, like, a waterfall in your mouth? Is it going to be too much tongue? Is it going to be perfect? Are you guys gonna mesh well together? That's what sex is like too. With any new experience with a new partner, you just don't know how it's gonna go the first time, which is scary and new, but it always works out. Or, you know, if you're not liking something they're doing, you know, you need to vocalize that. You need to communicate with sex. Let them know what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Go here, put your hand here, all of that. Um, but you can definitely take, let them take the lead. But yeah, I feel like once you're in the throes of it, you're going to be like, oh, why was I even stressing about this? It's very natural. Um, it feels very natural to the body. Just go along with what your body feels. Um, you don't need to put on a performance or do any porn star like voices or moaning or anything. Just do what feels organic and natural to you. Um, and that's the hottest shit ever. So good luck, girl. You're going to be just fine. Okay, next question. My boyfriend of five years doesn't stay hard and rarely comes anymore. I don't know what to do. We already do foreplay. Okay, so right off the top of my head, I would say it's probably some sort of like performance anxiety. Like he's having a hard time like getting into it. One of my best tips for both women and men, meditation, girl. Hear me out. So, you know, during sex, if you're not really super into it, you can, your mind wanders off into different things. Like, oh, I'm doing this later this week. I gotta pay this bill, you know? Like, you've been there. We've all been there during sex where you're like, fuck, like, why can't I get in the zone? And I feel like meditation, if you're practicing it regularly, helps you control your thoughts and helps you kind of zone in into your body a little bit more. So I do this on YouTube. You can just type in meditation body scan, I think, something like that, or I'll link one. Um, but essentially, you'll meditate for like 10 minutes and you do a scan of your entire body. You're laying down and it first says, focus on the feeling in your head, focus on the feeling in your eyes, your nose, your mouth. It goes all the way down and it helps you really get in tune with what you're feeling in your 
body essentially and after you do that a few times you get really in tune with the world around you but also yourself and you can come fast <laughs> so um i would say meditation is really really real when it comes to sex and orgasms i don't feel like a lot of people talk about that um but i would look into that um but also if he's feeling some sort of like performance anxiety um, and it's hard for him to like focus on getting hard or he's feeling frustrated, I would say do something low stakes like a massage, you know? Turn the lights down low, get the candles going, um, and just be like, we're doing a massage. <laughs> this is, does not need to lead to sex or anything. I just want to give you a massage. If he's feeling it after, he's feeling it. If not, that's cool too. Another thing you could do is like take away their senses so that they are really in the moment. Um, so take away the sense of touch bondage. Uh, take away the sight, something around your eyes. Just so that they can stay really in the zone with what's happening to them, uh, which is really hot as well. So you could do something like that. So yeah, those are a few things I would probably try to like spice it up, but make it relaxing and low stakes. Um, if stuff like that's not working, is he on medication at all? Medication can mess with your libido. It can mess with everything. Uh, depression, anxiety, all of those things can do a number on your sex drive, your libido, everything. So yeah, there's so many different factors, but those are a few things I would try. So good luck, girly. You guys got it. All right, you guys. So that's all I have as far as questions today. I hope you guys had fun hanging out with me. I love our girl chat videos. I feel like they really empower women to kind of speak up in their relationships, in their sex life, and just life in general, being a woman. Um, so I hope you got some good takeaways from this. If you submitted a question, thank you so much. I know it can be vulnerable and a little scary sharing this with a stranger, but I hope I gave you some good advice and I hope you walk away from the situation feeling a little stronger. And if any of the girlies have any advice who have been watching this, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear your perspective as well. But yeah, I love you guys all so much and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.